All right, let's talk about the physical science first pace, 1109. And if you're getting right up to that checkup and the self-test, there is a lot about significant figures. And then there's uh, yeah, a few other concepts. But let's talk about the significant figures, especially as we are solving some problems like you're gonna see. Now these are not the exact ones that are on your checkup, but they're similar. And I actually have these up here because I was just helping one of my students. Actually, I actually have two students who just uh, were doing this and needed some extra help beyond the first couple of videos that we had. Let's talk about this. Um, shekels in the Bible, it tells us, are 11.4 grams. Okay, shekels are in the Bible. And then we can convert from grams to ounces to pounds. But let's talk about how we do that. So I'm making up a problem here where I have a shield. So let's say one of Solomon's shields is 750 shekels, all right? So this is how we set up the conversion factors. And we did this earlier in the piece, okay? So whatever they give you, you put that on the top and we just put it over one. I call it a pedestal, all right? We're just trying to get it up into the numerator. Then whatever units <coughs> were given, we put that on the bottom, okay? Then whatever we're converting into goes on the top. So let me show you how this cancels then. <clears throat> this will be one shekel down here. So shekels cancel shekels. Now I'm in grams. Well, then I put grams on the bottom so that grams cancels grams. And then one ounce is 28.3 grams. Now I'm gonna cancel ounces and go to pounds, okay? So now I can cancel that and my answer comes out in pounds. Now let me give you, if you're used to using a calculator, well I would, I would encourage you to use a calculator to do the math on these, but let me just give you one quick clue, all right, I'll help you out. On your calculator, if you punch in 750 times 11.4 divided by 28.3 and then you hit times 16, you're going to get it wrong, okay? The surefire way to always get these right is multiply all the top together, write the number down. Multiply all the bottom numbers together. So one times one times 28.3 times 16, write that number down. And then as your last step, take the top number, divide by the bottom, okay? That'll help. Let's talk about adding and subtracting. So this one is with milliliters. Doesn't matter, it could be anything. But this number here has one, two, three, four, five decimal places and this number has two decimal places. So the rule <clears throat> when we're adding or subtracting, very different than multiplying and dividing. We're not counting significant figures, okay? No, we're looking at place value. And the reason is this instrument here, wow! That was, this is some kind of supersonic um, NASA device that uses laser technology to be able to carry that out to five decimal places. That's amazingly accurate. And then this is one that's eh, made in China and in uh, you know, maybe some Christian school lab and it's not very accurate. So it's only the two decimal places. Well, if I have these two measurements, I have to limit my answer to the least accurate measuring device, which is determined by how many decimal places, okay, or place value. So in this case, I can count decimal places. Two here, I have five here. I do the math, boom, and I have to round the answer to having only two decimal places. And so that's why this zero, the five rounds the zero up to a one, okay? Now let's look at this one. Now I'm adding. All of these have <clears throat> three significant figures, but that's not what we're looking at. <clears throat> we are looking at place value again. So this one has one decimal place, this one has two decimal places, this one has three. So even though I do the math and I add them all up, the key is I have to round the answer to the least number of decimal places, which in this case is one decimal place right here. So I'm rounding the answer to here, and so this seven tells me to round the four up to a five. The other thing that I don't have up here on the board, but they have this, you had this on your, in your homework, they might have a number like 
3,100 and maybe minus 700 and they have these bars over the zeros. <clears throat> the bar means that it is significant out to that digit, including that digit. So this one is significant to the tens place and this one to the ones place. Okay, so now I'm not counting decimal numbers because I don't have any decimal places. But of these two numbers, the least precise measurement would be the top one. So once I do the math, I would have to round to the nearest tens place. So this would be 28, and the bar would have to go over the least precise measurement. Okay, so it's always think about which I can't, just because your calculator can carry it out to umpteen places doesn't mean you can use that in your answer. We're limited by the least precise measurement. And that's one of that keyword measurement. If you're doing a problem and there's a couple of them where one of the numbers is not a measurement, it's just like the number three by itself or five, okay? If it's not a measurement, then you don't include that in determining significant figures. It's like it has an infinite number of zeros after it, okay? Now let's look at this one right here. First of all, we just multiply the three together. Okay, we should put meters to the third power here, by the way. And so we get 111.888 for this particular one. Now, how do I know how many significant figures to have in the answer? Well, this one has two. So now we're not looking at place value. We're looking or counting significant figures, all right? So multiplying and dividing, we count, and then the least number of significant figures is what we limit our answer to. So this one has two, this one has three, this one has two. Do you remember why this zero is significant? Okay, remember the picture of the United States? There's Texas, Florida, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean. If the, zero, if the decimal is present, then the arrow comes from the P, the Pacific Ocean, and boom, it gets stuck right away in the three. So the zero is protected, okay? It doesn't get popped. So we would include the zero. So we have two, we have three, we have two. So I have to limit my answer to two. Well, how do I limit the answer to two places, <clears throat> two significant figures, if I have a three-digit number with three decimals? Sometimes I've had students think, well, I gotta move the decimal. No, 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 we're not moving the decimal. Don't get confused with, you know, if I have two significant figures, I start at the far left, take the highest place value. So I have one place value in the hundreds, I have a place value in the tens, both of these numbers are significant, and then the third digit has to be a zero, okay? And then basically I can drop everything after that because I can only have two significant figures. So in this case, one, and then I would need to determine whether this tens value one should stay a one or whether it gets rounded up to a two. Well, this one's easy because the next digit's one, so we just leave that at one. So the answer would be 110 <clears throat> meters cubed. All right? So when we're doing significant figures, with, when we're multiplying or dividing, how many significant figures can I have in the answer? The least number of any of the numbers involved in the problem. And then I start at the left in my answer, and I include that many significant figures. Everything else either becomes zeros or disappears. All right, let's do a division problem. <clears throat> Kilometers per hour, we divide, and we get 228.5. How many significant figures in point 0.2? 0 0.2? 2, are you thinking 2? No, it's not 2. Go back to here. Is the decimal present? Yes, it is. <clears throat> so the arrow comes in from the Pacific and pops that balloon. And so I have one significant figure. Da, 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 da. So when I do the math, I get 228.5. And then that means I can only use one, but it has to stay in the hundreds place value. So I use the two because that's in the hundreds place, it's the only significant figure, and then I'm rounding, so these become zeros, and I don't have to add zero. In fact, I should not add zero. 
As soon as I add 0, 0.0, now I'm turning them all into significant figures, and I can only have one significant figure. Don't forget your units, kilometers per hour for that one. All right, I know this is tricky. I'm gonna, let me just reassure you, this is like the hardest part of this pace, and this is like the hardest pace for the next few paces, okay? There's gonna be math in the other paces, but honestly, the significant digits part is, is really challenging, okay? Everybody who goes through this pace probably fails the checkup, maybe even the self-test, but the key is to go back and figure out why you got them wrong, and try to understand them, okay, so that you can do well on the pace test. One last thing I want to mention, I'm going to let you go. Ask your supervisor or your teacher or your parent, but what I tell my students to do, especially if they're not the engineering type of student, <laughs> okay, when they move on to the next several paces where they have to solve problems, the score key is going to keep applying all of these rules for significant figures. And so the final answer, they're going to put in bold print, and it may be different than what you have. But if you look back in how they solved it, you will probably find in the work the exact answer that you got. Okay? And you say, well, why the difference? It's because they're applying these rules. I tell my students, if your answer, your number, is the same as the math, Give yourself credit, okay? Don't mark it wrong. Now, if you want to or your supervisor wants you to go back and apply these rules all the time, you know, it's between you and them. I tell my students, count it correct if you did the math correct. You've solved the problem correctly. Now, my students who are more math inclined and they want to go on to engineering, I tell them they have to. They have to apply these rules because they need to master this all the way through high school before they get to college because they definitely are going to be applying these in the upper sciences in college. All right, I hope that helps and uh, hope you do well on your upcoming self-test and pace test.